You're very welcome to another episode of the Scaling Your Business podcast. For this episode, delighted to be joined by Sean Doherty, the owner of the 555 Club. Sean, you're very welcome to the show. Ryan, great to be here. Delighted to have you, Sean. Sean, you've listened to the show before, so you'll know what way I'm going to take this. From your LinkedIn, it says you're from Straban. I know your accent is a Northern Irish accent. You're not from Straban by the look, by the facial expression <laughs> you're making. Tell me, where, where did you grow up and what was it like where you grew up? Uh, grew up in Inishon, very northwest Donegal. Um, spent was there till I was eighteen before I moved to Galway. Um, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. And one of the, one of those places you don't appreciate until you move away. And then I actually brought friends back from college or university, depending how you how you say it. And they were just blown away by the scenery, blown away by everything. And then yeah. spent time in London, and you realize when you're a concrete jungle, just how beautiful mountains and grass and fresh air is. Well, I know that you went to Galway to go to uni in GMIT to study construction studies. What made you pick that before we get on to London? Uh, I did my leaving in 2005. So if you weren't in construction in 2005, then you were, you were, uh, you know, you just weren't at the races. So it was, and my dad's a plumber, to be fair. Um, and I've all like, to this day, I still have an interest in the, the built environment and how things fit together, how it works. Uh, so it'd be a, at that stage, I suppose at 17, it was how do I make the most money the fastest? But mm. then there was also a, a, an underlying interest in it as well. Gotcha. And was it that that brought you after you qualified in construction studies to London? Yeah, I did nine months work placement in London for a company, J. Brown Construction. Um, came back to Galway, 08, 09. Everything just fell to pieces didn't really know what to do there was no work emailed the director of the company to chance my arm and he said look there's a place here for you went over as a junior engineer spent a couple of years we spent a year and a half with jay brown and then moved to a startup Malem uh, with a guy from limerick and a fellow from mayo Malem being the being the, the phrase and spent about three months there and that then was whenever my life changed at that point came home on a holiday was diagnosed with cancer and that takes me down a whole different route then mm. yeah what was the nine months like in london was that a, a culture shock you mentioned concrete jungle about three minutes ago no not at all i i loved it i remember 2010 home for christmas and wasn't really sure of you know how i felt going back and coming down the escalator at tottenham hill met a somalian family coming up and i just thought this is class this is just magic. Uh, the you know the diversity. The if you on a Wednesday night, get on Gumtree, find tickets to the Gorillas, go to the Gorillas. You're back home in bed again at half ten. Uh, you're up for work the next day. No, I, I loved it, and some of my best friends to this to this day are from my probably eighteen months in London. Brilliant, brilliant. You mentioned um, the pivotal change in or the 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 big change in your life 2011 is what i have down here diagnosed mm. i'm gonna butcher this but type 3b hodgkin lymphoma yeah that's it Spoiler. excellent um for those who don't know what is that it's a cancer of the lymphatic system and i i didn't even know i had a lymphatic system when i was 24 years old uh, yeah. i didn't do biology or anything like that so uh, basically it's the drainage system of the body that gets the waste out i had tumors on the on my neck i had when i was i played a fair bit of sports so when i was running i could feel a pulling in my neck no idea what this was later transpired that the pulling was a 14 I'm trying to get this right now it was a 14 14 centimeter it was that that there anyway that distance of a really? of a mass so it was actually flattening my left lung and pushing my windpipe over so when i was running that was the pulling uh the lumps in my neck i was told i was about six weeks away from that just cutting off the main vein to my brain and I just would have dropped dead on construction site one day with no pain, no symptoms, uh, anything like that. So really, really, really lucky. But I, 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 you know, like any 24 year old male, I thought I was invincible and dodged yeah. an awful lot of things that I were staring me in the face for a long time. And throughout that recovery period between 2011 and I think the fully all clear was 2019. Uh, fully all clear first was 2015 and then the recovery really started you know being all clear and been fully recovered are two very different things uh, I would say I'm only really fully recovered in the last two and a half three years in terms mm -hmm. of energy how I'm working 
you know, even even down to my body shape, I'm sort of getting back to where I was before. It's, it's been a yeah. long, a long road with a lot of good lessons. I've 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 had a number of uh, colleagues in previous roles or uh, acquaintances that have re- recovered from cancer, and a lot of them typically. If you get in conversation with them for more than 30 minutes, they'll usually say about the topic of cancer, not that you talk about that all the time, but they'll usually say one of the things they feared most was being or the, the fear of falling behind or being left behind when it came to work, as in this goes on two, three years. I'm so far behind. I won't be able to find my way back into work. Was that ever a fear of yours? Uh, initially, my diagnosis was very, very positive. It went from, you know, you'll be back in London in six months. Yeah. And then it kept going on and on. So that fear didn't come in for me because it, it went from you'll be okay to, oh shit, am I going to be alive? So I yeah. didn't really, and, and it was maybe frustrating, it's not the right word, challenging, watching friends, family, you know, I have a younger brother who's four years younger than me and actually seeing him move beyond me in his career. And I remember speaking with a good friend, um, Martin Burke, and he actually said to me, he's like, your job for as long as it takes is to get better. Yeah. And that was how I treated it. And then whenever I entered the working world at 30, I had, you know, still to this day at 34, challenging. It's like, don't treat yourself as a 30 year old, you're a 20 year old. Um, so treat every career opportunity as if you're 20 and view it as if you've got, you know, 40 years of life ahead of you, 50 years of working life ahead of you. Gotcha. So that was, a, it's just removed. Instead of looking at my friends who are earning, you know, anywhere from 70 to quarter of a million, you know, because you can't compare yourself to those people and you're not in their shoes. Um, so it was challenging, but, but good. Which brings us to 555 Club, because you've gone from construction studies to engineer because you needed a job to then almost a, a full decade of recovery. I'm assuming the 555 Club came about because of the, that, that period that you went through. To a degree, it did. I, my first job back, well, my first job during it uh, was a wedding photographer. And that was because I could, I could earn a week's wages by working a day and then rest for four days. I could lie in a busted heap. So I could give everything for a day and then just lie. And like, yeah. Um, then qualified as a financial advisor. Really enjoyed that. You know, I've always enjoyed numbers. I've enjoyed how business works. I've enjoyed how, you know, how money's accumulated, how it's kept, how it's lost. And then through my different healing modalities, journeys, different things that paths I went down, I came across breath work and cold exposure. Uh, so like anything I do, you know, it wasn't so much as I wanted to take it as a business, but I wanted to learn more about it. So I studied with Patrick McKeown and Galway for the auction advantage. I studied with Alchemy of Breath and they're, you know, they're, they don't, I think their headquarters are in Hong Kong, but they're global. And I was at the, at the same time, I was training with um, a former colleague of yours, Marcus Cockey and huh. sales know. training. So that was as, as a financial advisor. And I, and I remember my first sales trainer was Benjamin Dehenny, who's Sandler trained as well and now has his own, you know, has, he's got a yeah, little spin yeah. on it. And I had never experienced sales in this way before. Like, I, you know, my perception of sales was the guy in the pinstripe suit selling ice to the Eskimos who don't need it. So whenever I found myself as a financial advisor realizing, holy shit, I'm in sales here. I need to learn how to get money. Um. So the, the whole Sandler methodology kind of blew my mind and what sales was and that it's not actually sales, it's just communication, it's psychology, it's dealing with people. And I've used it to this day way more in my personal life than I ever have in my business. And for that, I'm for Marcus, for Benjamin, for everyone involved, I'm you know, always grateful for that. So over that process, I'm kind of going on a meandering loss. No, you're all right. Well, the question I was going to ask, and, and shout out to Marcus, by the way, um, Big, big fan of Marcus. I've spent many, uh, many days and nights in Marcus's company, and he mm. always drops a, a, a knowledge bombs whenever I'm around him. Yeah, he was the person that taught me to that the average person can't uh, doesn't like silence and can't withstand it for more than two point three seconds. So if you can be silent longer, 
the chances are that you'll uncover information that you wouldn't have covered if you had just spoken. So that was one of the first things that Marcus spoke to me about probably in 2015 at my first Sandler conference in Orlando. Um, the 555 Club, though, so for those who are not familiar with it, um, it's easier for you to give the mm. elevator pitch a 30 second commercial because yeah. it's your baby. Yeah, and, and that's, that's actually how this is like Marcus is where we're leading to with this. So the opportunity came up to train with Marcus or work with Marcus in a, in a sales organization. So I weighed up my pros and cons of leaving my financial advice career, moving to a junior role in a sales organization. And I thought I had the opportunity to get paid to train with Marcus rather than pay him a, you know, a princely sum of money. That's to, Yeah, yes. <laughs> Good sales trainers aren't cheap. Um, six to seven weeks in, that company pretty much ran out of money. They had to lay everyone off on the one day. Um, sales team gone. So at that stage, I had already in the back of my mind around doing something with breath work and holistic well-being, taking the lessons that I had learned the hard way. And at that point, last February, it was, okay, here's the universe kicking you up the ass, go and do something. So initially, it was around breath work and bringing that to people, the functional breathing side for stress management at work. And June, July last year, realized that, you know, I didn't really have a top of funnel to get people into breath work. So I had this idea for free Instagram, 7 a.m. Monday to Friday, the 555 Club, just driving home. Started this the next Monday. Within a couple of days, you know, started getting messages in my inbox around, this is really profound. This, you know, I can't believe what's come up for me. Actually, one lady said she cried with sort of happiness through it. And that, they, it had an initial spike, like I think most people will have, of curiosity of what's this guy doing? And then it tapered way off down to one or two people a day. There was a stage it was me and my wife on the calls. Fair play. She always, she never let me be there on my own. Solid. And one of the days, there was two people on the call. And I, I just thought, what am I doing here? What is the point of this? I'm you know, getting up every morning doing this. So one of the two ladies worked for Inspire in Northern Ireland. That's a mental health organization. She reached out, would you mind doing this in person? I've been joining your calls. I've been taking a lot from it. So yeah, of course. Then started doing this in person for these, you know, the people struggling with their mental health, they're stuck in their houses, they're getting out. Again, within two or three weeks of a 10 week session, feedback became really positive, really strong. That led to more work in person. And then it got to the point of, okay, this is great, but I can only be in so many places at once. How do I bring this to more people? So it went through three or four different iterations of, will it be once a day, Monday, Wednesday, for, you know, five days a week? And then as well, if someone has a meeting, then they miss that. And then it went to, okay, it'll be three times a day. And, and at the minute now, it's four times a day, three times a week. And the date of this is the 17th of January. Uh, by February, it will be five times a week, just seeing the feedback, how it's coming through and different, you know, what, what, what I'm getting from people. And it, it's been fun and challenging getting it off the ground. So there's the 555 method is three things for five minutes a day, breath work, meditation and gratitude. Yes. Focus on breath work. What's that involve? The breath work here, the, the pure idea behind the five minutes of breath work like it can be used for many tools but for this particular one it's to get you out of your head so it's a continuous breath in through the nose out through the mouth with no pause at the top no pause at the bottom i don't care about how fast you go how slow you go you can't do it wrong um, a lot yeah. of you know a lot of the western world myself included it's like how do i do it right i need to get this right if you breathe like that for five minutes it's much easier to just switch your thought off and go within so then that leads you into the meditation in a much more gentle way rather than coming out of your meeting at half 11 and then trying to sit still for five minutes. So the whole idea of the breath work is to just make the meditation a little bit easier for people who aren't used to sitting still. The meditation is designed really, you know, I call it a meditation so loosely. It's, it's four and a half, five minutes. It's designed to bring you back to this moment. You know, so much of the stress we carry and there's, you know, there's stress beyond this but the majority is when we're putting ourselves in the future or reliving the past. Mm. And what I even put it down to, for me, at the, like at the stage I'm at, it's cold calling businesses. So the fear I have around cold calling is because I'm putting myself in the future. Of what's this CEO going to say to me? What's this company owner? It's like, okay, you're in the future. Bring it back down, pick up the phone. 
there's nothing wrong. You're in the, everything's fine. Start dialing the first number. Everything's okay. The phone's ringing. Everything's okay. Mm. Next thing I know, I'm having a conversation and everything's okay. Or they tell me piss off and that's still okay because they're allowed to do that. Whereas before it's like, oh no, I'm going to do this and then he'll say that and I'll say that and then, he'll, and then I'll look stupid. But it's just about, can you keep coming back to this moment? This is the only moment we have to affect any change in our health in our lives and our business and our marriage and our pension this moment right now. And then the final step. Yeah. The, which I, the final step leads on to gratitude. And that's, I, I always change the music at this point. It comes upbeat and it's just designed to bring appreciation for what is in your experience at this point of time. Uh, it's not about being positive. I'm a, uh, huge believer in sometimes being positive is accepting that this situation is shit and that's okay. Uh, to me, that is a positive outlook on it. It's about the smallest things. Um, you know, are you, you know, the internet's working here solidly. I've got two lights lighting me up. Whenever you start bringing it down to the small, small, small thing, and you can go as big as you want, you know, someone in Ireland won the lotto over the weekend yeah. you know they have something to be grateful for this morning but in six months when they're used to the trappings of 19 million it'll be the small things that make the difference and it's yeah. just about bringing that in um appreciating what's going good acknowledging what's in your experience that's working in your favor i see you're a fan of wim hof i am i am wim hof changed my life and i don't say that lately how so one of the side effects conditions of my, not my, of the stem cell transplant is a condition called graft versus host disease. So that is where my donor cells, in my case, it was my sister. I was very lucky. She's a straight line match. Attack my cells. Um, yeah. She's also the person who noticed the lumps in my neck. So she saved my life twice. Wow. Which, What's your thanks. sister's name, by the way? Maria. Well, shout out to Maria. Yeah, she doesn't lord it over me, which is which is nice. I do appreciate it. Um, so one of the one of the conditions is what graft versus host disease, and it can materialize in many, many, many different ways. The way I have it is I have a mouth that doesn't really produce saliva that much, so I will always have a pint of water beside me, and I get rashes. So the rashes were quite painful um, and sore, and I just was told this is you know this is what it is. Get used to it. And in the grand scheme of things, quite a small side effect to have. I'm alive. I'll, I'll live with a few rashes. Mm. So October 2018, uh, Joe Rogan, episode 712 with Wim Hof. Uh, just felt, didn't know who the guy was, felt called to the episode, literally was scrolling through the episodes on Pocket Casts, stopped, listened. Listened for the two hours, just put it straight back to the start and listened to it again. And he was talking about um, bone marrow function, T cell, uh, different, basically everything that was wrong with me. My bone marrow wasn't working at the time. I was on Nupogen twice a week, which is a, an artificial stimulant for your immune system. I was on EPO once a week, which is the same stuff Lance Armstrong was jacked on. <laughs> um, you know, pushing the wheelie bin out would absolutely exhaust me. Uh, climbing stairs, pooped. So these drugs kept me functioning. Mm. and thought you know what flip it i'll try it what what is there to lose i'll start having cold showers and doing breath work and within a pretty short space of time and i used to get recurring sinus infections as well from radiotherapy to the side of my head so what i found was when i did the breath work every morning i was clearing my sinuses in through the nose out through the mouth so i was clearing my sinuses of stuff that i didn't know was in there which would eventually down the road get infected so because i was keeping my sinuses clear there was nothing there to get infected and then from the cold exposure and i didn't twig this until about a month later whenever on a saturday morning i just said you know what i'm going to treat myself to a warm shower had the warm shower came out and was like oh ah there's the rashes that i haven't noticed in four weeks so just started playing and people will always ask me how do i know if this is going to help me it's like, Try it. Just yeah. and, and if it doesn't stop doing it, if you don't feel better, stop doing it. And if you do feel better, keep doing it. Or at least know that you have it in your arsenal that you can come back to it. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems so caught up and again getting everything so right before they do anything. So just give it a go. What have you got to lose? 
put the shower to cold for two minutes at the end of your shower. And if you, if, if you don't feel better after two weeks, stop doing it. It's not for you. And that's, that's been my approach to everything. Try it. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. And then pull it back. And, and that's, that's, that's my, you know, that's the science that I've applied to it. And there's, I haven't gone very deep with the science because for me, it's, does it help me? It's like, yes. You from, I've listened to a couple of podcasts that you've been on in prep for this and you talk a lot about gratitude. And to me, it springs to mind IR theory and that you, mm. you as a, as a person are always at 10, but you can be, uh, you know, I'm a, as a footballer, I'm a one out of 10. It doesn't make me any less better of a human as a cold caller. I could be a five out of 10, but again, it doesn't make me any less than a 10 out of 10 identity. Have, have you, have you studied or read up or any interest at all in, in IR theory? Cause it kind of blends into what you talk about on some of the podcasts about gratitude. Um, massively. Um, David Sandler has been, you know, to, to, to label him as a sales trainer is an insult to the man. Look what he brings in terms of the importance of your self-concept, how you view yourself and the amount of people I've been in just with that IR theory where it's, one-on-one -on -one work or client work where they're coming with issues and it's often that they're associating their role with who they are like i've had a crap month at work and, and this this is what i did as a younger man in my early 20s i was caught up in i am my, i am an engineer this is what i do and then with cancer my performance started dropping drastically and then because my performance was dropping under pressure of course you then go out and drink friday saturday sunday which doesn't help anything. And then you perform worse. And then you start questioning who you are. And is this, you know, I, I'm, I'm someone who excels at work. It's like, well, clearly you're not because you're not excelling. Therefore, you know, you're not as good a person as you thought you were. Um, and it also ties in with, I think, Carol Duick's book, uh, Mindset, on the fixed versus the growth mindset really really exposed a younger version of me as well like I would have always classified myself quite a not I was quite a cocky quite a an outgoing confident person on the surface but when it came to applying myself at work with study I would hold back it's like I would much rather not study for the test and then you know I can't lose because I haven't tried mm -hmm. uh, and then that's again try, trying to protect that you know PYA protecting your ass at all times the cool facade but yeah the beyond sandler's work and i've you know i've read eric burns stuff around the, the games people play but it, you know, it doesn't tap in too much to that but i think it's one of the most important concepts that any human being can can wrap their head around it's very easy to talk about and, and quite challenging to apply yeah. when the chips are down yeah you mentioned a book there it said, or they say that everyone has a book inside them. Do you think you'll ever write yours? I've been asked this so many times. <laughs> I have put thought to it, but I, there's so many inspirational people and so many well-accomplished and rounded people that I wouldn't want to write another Look at me, I had cancer and I survived book. Let me ask you this question then. If your old uh, secondary school invited you back in to give a 90-minute talk, what would the topic be? You're not your grades. You're not the, you're, you're not the topics that you're weak in. Hmm. So with that being said, have you got a definition of what you believe success is? Mm, I, I've, am I allowed to pick more than one? Sure. I have several. There's, for a long time, in, in my teens, early 20s, success was, you know, get a helicopter and fly around the world and be a multi-billionaire. And then, honestly, at about 26, success was being able to walk a flight of stairs without stopping. Mm. Um. Today, for me, success on the, you know, at the 555, I want to get it to a point where I can 
kind of pick up a laptop, work wherever I want to work, employ people to do the day-to-day stuff and I can expand it globally. Like the, there's that side of it. But success is also, is my body responding to the stimulus I'm putting it under? If, it, if I sleep, do I wake up rested? Um, if I train, does it respond? Am I able to put on weight when I want to put on weight and I'm able to lose weight when I want to lose weight? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have very very many definitions of success and one of the ones that really hit me and it's it's actually from your last podcast with Mike Winnett and I spent the first half of that podcast thinking I need to grow the 555 club and sell it and make fucking millions and the second half of that podcast he talked about success being able to do what you want when you want with the people who you love Mm. and I was out walking my dogs at three o'clock on a Friday and that was me at work it's like I'll be home in time for the next 555 and I was like this this is success Mm. so it's yeah i think i think there's many definitions but of course we all get caught up in you know one of, one of the things i'm really interested in is the the fallacy of the six-figure income that no matter who you talk to be it ireland england america canada six figures is the holy grail but it's a very different amount of money in each country but yet sure. it's all but it's all banked as once you get to six figures you've made it well i'm glad you didn't start the mike winner podcast halfway through yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm glad you asked him the question. Yeah, no, Mike's a fascinating guy. And I, I had heads up that I was going to get the opportunity to chat to him uh, two or three weeks in advance. Um, I think similar person, actually, Donald, that put me in contact with you, also put me in contact with Mike. Uh, so shout out to Donald O'Reilly if you're listening. Um, he definitely is. Yeah. I've got one or two more questions for you before you wrap up. You've probably heard one or two of them before, but is there a tool out there with all that that you do? I think you said you do uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, th- or three days a week, four sessions, and you want to get to the five, and you hope to have the business at a point where you can bring on people to manage some of the operations side of things. So is there an ideal tool out there that you want to give a shed to or a tool that you could not remove from your day-to-day, that, like you couldn't live without? The very obvious one for me at the minute is that there's there's several of them. Um, LinkedIn sales nav, because that's where I am getting my prospect list from. And then the, the software that lets me get people's direct access mobile numbers. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous what you can achieve in this day and age with, you know, 150, 200 quid. Yeah. Zoom, like everybody on Zoom, like this is, a, a, People are so obsessed about building an app and getting stuff done. Like this is perfect for me. Everyone has it. Everyone can get on it. And yeah, no, you're right. We I, I use Zoom as well monthly for events, and it's you you combine LinkedIn Sales Navigator and the correct outreach and referrals and lead IQ or Zoom info, and, and you can get hundred to four hundred people on on, on a Zoom call. And and one thing I will say that's not a tool, but it's a a product of paying for good sales training and networking events it's not so much yes the knowledge is great but the people that you're getting access to who you can become your friends the network of people who you can pick up the phone and talk to when things are shit or you're wondering how would they approach a situation uh, that that has really been invaluable to me over the last 12 months the network effect is something people rarely talk about but to me, it's so powerful. Like you look at a lot of these big universities, you can pick any of them for an internationality, you might pick Harvard. And it's not just the degree that you're paying to get. It's also the network that you're paying to be able to access as well, Mm -hmm. because that's huge private schools, the network you're being able to pay to access. You go down to something as free as the podcast that I'm running right now. This is going to be episode 165. Mm-hmm. Um, even my father's podcast, he's like 104, 105 episodes. Recently, as of recent of as of last week, we sat down and we looked at the guests that he has on the show, and we were like, "What kind of guests do we want this year?" And we're going more towards kind of the VP of sales, EMEA kind of headquarter companies. And we went to the previous guests and we said, "You know, thanks for being on the show. You've contributed to the success." this is the kind of guest we're looking for. Have you got anyone in your network? And the amount of people that we got referred to from that, who are then happy to come on because they've been referred by someone who they know really well. And I looked at a couple of the names and I said, well, I've tried to get four or five of these people on the podcast. 
but I've never gotten a response. And now because we've got an introduction from someone they're familiar with, they're coming back to us. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's crazy. And I, I think people overlook that massively. That are, Fucking, he's charging that a month. It's like, yeah, but look, you're getting around. Mm. You know, like, like, that's one of the things that I will attribute, like, whatever small business success I've had so far has been my ability to overstretch myself at the early, you know, with my finances in terms of my savings, save up, go to a little networking event that I can't afford to be around people who are earning 15 times what I'm earning, stay in touch with them continually, like, don't ask, just be a sounding board for these guys as often as they need it. And it has, it has paid back infinitely. And it was never an intention to get it paid back. But I've just seen with network, with connections, with advice, with friendships, it has been, it's been phenomenal. So the final question of the podcast is, if you could add a mandatory subject to the secondary school curriculum, what would it be and why? I'd like to put a spin on that question. And it's not, it's, it's not adding something. It's rather a, a change of perception away from you need good great you need to get 500 points in the leaving cert which is a, a good result for any uk listeners um you need to then go to university and then you need to go do a master's like it's not the right path for many yeah. like, i didn't if i was 18 and someone showed me SaaS sales i would not even go sign me up to this company teach me this i didn't know it existed i didn't know it existed until marcus told me about it it's like you're a plumber or a carpenter or a lawyer or an accountant that's it uh, i think Careers advice would benefit a lot from getting people in to talk about it to students rather than having teachers talk about roles that they've never actually worked in or experienced. Uh, and I think, again, going back to Sandler, that there's, there's too much credence given to grades and not enough to listen. He's messing about a bit in school, but he's, he's a very impersonable person and he makes friends very easy and he's going to do all right for himself. Don't stress about it. Don't worry too much about your grades out there. I got 355 points in my leaving cert and I'm relatively happy where I am with life. Mm. But but then it comes back to, are you giving what you can give? Mm. You know, like don't, don't use that as an excuse to take your foot off the gas at whatever level you're at. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Sean, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast today. I will leave links to, I'm assuming you'll send them to me post the podcast to where people can get more information on the 555 Club your social channels and anything else you want to include it just let me know and we'll include it afterwards but for today thanks for being my guest beautiful thank you Ian.